It is out of the weed in the hallway. They've been waiting in the hallway for me to leave so they can start slamming their doors, <laughs> you know? All right, so yeah, so they've been waiting in the hallway for me to leave. You know, uh, the New York Predator Department outside, you know, uh, surveilling me, um, listening to our conversation, me and Pam, and using, again, remote no monitoring, right, uh, to, uh, you know, hijack my consciousness. And, um, you know, so for example, uh, she, she went out today. It's funny, she went out, there, you know, laundry pile up, <laughs> right? But she did try to uh, manipulate me into doing the laundry. I just had another door slam. And it um, didn't happen, though. It didn't work. Like I said, I, I know they, they talk their tactics too well. And, uh, you know, she'd rather go out. them there waiting outside man <laughs> Wait. but anyhow so as I was saying so she'd rather go out now I know she didn't have plans today because she didn't mention anything so apparently you know they what it is that they do again they'll have their perps who I guess approaches her um, to ask her out and shit like that you know it's just you know like I said I don't really care about that what I do care about again is that you know, leaving the kids, uh, you know, she did get them back early, but she came back, she was extremely drunk, literally um, staggering and, and fell down on the couch and fell asleep. So hence the reason why I'm leaving this late, you know? And on top of that, uh, you know, she's, I tell her, you know, you shouldn't be drinking, you're taking medication. You know, but, you know, certain people, when they get around other people, you know, they get a little extra. They forget, you know, because they want to be part of the group so bad that, you know, they'll do things like this. Like I said, she knows she's on medication. She should not be drinking. And so, you know, she came home, like I said, passed out. And... What was I doing? I was playing uh, a game, and you know they started controlling, taking control of the character of the game. As I was playing the division, all of a sudden, you know, my character, my character is like shooting. I'm like, hey. I'm, remember, my hand is not on the and, uh, on the controller uh, trigger buttons, right? And I realized what was going on. I'm like, wait a minute, why is this happening? And again, it's not, it's not because the controller is faulty anything like that okay and while they were doing that as I just was walking past about to walk past my eyes was directed to this license plate to Texas P and B 8131 you know I was talking about how they like to engage in this oh they, she's moving she's gonna move or whatever like I don't care she moves she moves you know <laughs> but again and they try to manipulate your emotions, you know, because again, it's a false narrative. Remember, they want to make it seem like, you know, you're controlling, but they're the ones that are controlling. Always remember that, right? This is projection, psychological projection. They have to make you into who they are. So that way they can, the focus will be on you and not on them, right? Even though you're not like that, they will try to turn you into that, into that. Understand how their mindset works. All right? Understand how they, how these people mindset are. All right? The narcissists, the dark triads, those who like to uh, manipulate so they can control people. And they turn around and they call those uh, of us who they want to control or they try to control, try to call us controlling. You know, but it's very easy to create a narcissistic personality in this society, in Western society. 
particularly when money is being used, right? Money and sex. Okay, money and sex. Um, you know, I listen to Bobby Herb Hermit a lot, and he talks about how they put certain things in the movies, right? And you know, at times I, I kind of figure it out, but now I, I begin to see a lot more now. You know, I talk about the movie Dune, where um, there's a there's a part where the, the there's um, like what you call these these women who have these special abilities, but they're all about working in the shadows. You know, moving pieces together. You know, so that they can always be in a position of power. So they're ruling from behind the scenes, right? Because they not not only. Because again, wisdom, they're wise. And again, that's not something that, what we start to see in certain movies is that we start to see how they, before I go on, let me just say this. A lot of these Hollywood writers, they read ancient myths. They read ancient myths, they study ancient myths. Okay, this is how they come up with all these ideas and such, like uh, as such, and they just put it in a modern day setting or in a futuristic setting. But the stories are all the same, right? They may have different characters, but most of the premises are basically the same. So these women, you know, again, who move, they're like the Catholic Church, right? They rule, in the, they rule from behind. They're the invisible hand that control things, okay? And they, they will create situations in order to, uh, um, you know, select a leader or a ruler, right? And make it seem as if, uh, again, that these people have these special powers but no they don't and I'm not talking about you know um, Atreides or what have you I'm talking about those who they will they, they can use other kingdoms to overthrow other kingdoms you know by engaging in manipulation you know assassination and so forth right rumors and so forth so in this there's a scene where the the woman is like one of the older women. She's like, um, when she's talking about how they how they manipulate, how they move the pieces together, how they how they create the outcome that they want, right? But then there are certain outcomes that happen that even though they know will happen, right? But because they are so overconfident that they'll end up losing or being defeated. Right, but it's only that that defeat is only temporary because until they readjust and align themselves with the powers, the new powers that be, and then they start to do the same thing over again. Okay. So, if me saying that, what I'm saying is this: that they can create whatever personality they want in this society. You wouldn't even even understand, or wouldn't even know what the personality they create within you. As Dr. Amos Wilson says. You know, they have to make, particularly as black people, they have to create a backwards mindset within us, right? A menticide mindset, right? Deliberate, perpetrated on the black community, on black men and black women and black children. Okay, it is deliberate. No question about it. Okay? And because this programming is so deep in our subconscious that it plays itself out in our conscious, in our conscious reality. Right, but a lot of how we behave and how we act is based on our subconscious program. So a lot of times we do certain things when we're totally unaware of it, okay, or we don't realize the certain ramifications, certain detriment, because we have not given a realistic uh, um, explanation of these things, right? This is why within, when you go into a breakup, right? What do your family tell you? Most family will tell you what you want to hear. Instead of telling you the truth, they telling you what you need to hear. Again, and it's a programming. I was explaining to Pam. I said, but you have to look at, see how you're being programmed. You have to become conscious of your programming. Okay? I said, because ultimately, if you don't become conscious of your programming, you're going to pass on that programming to your children. So you have, to be, you have to wake up every morning, every day, right? And making conscious decisions, okay? And understanding uh, certain ramifications, certain possibilities and what have you, 
and not be lowered by money, not be lowered by uh, uh, fame, right? Because that's what they use. And again, in a certain position that they put you into, you're not getting real financial compensation. You're making a living, a better, you know, you may make a better salary than the majority of, of people, but it ain't, you know, <laughs> like it, it ain't in the, you know, in the in the hundreds of thousands. You know, you may make close to a hundred thousand, maybe a little bit over a hundred thousand. But that's nothing compared to the type of salary other people make doing in the same position that you're in as a black person. But we we know this. They're still we, they're still engaged in pay discrimination, particularly in the private sector. Right now, if you work for the federal government. You know, you have you get fair uh, fair pay, but when it comes to private corporations, there is no fair pay, fair ac uh, fair equity unless you are really uh, uh, unless you really bought into their program and unless you're really good at what it is that you do, and if they let you into that um, establishment, into that structure, into that society, but you're going to do what they want you to do. Okay. This is why you see you have very few black people, black men or black women, that are running uh, Fortune 500 companies. And I don't blame them. You know, they, yeah, hey, hey, you know, most of these companies are white. So what do you expect? Right? It's just that we have to, come up, we have to realize that we need to start creating these big companies, right? And but we have to create a structure around us to where, if there's, we know about the sabotage, we know all these things. Right, so we should be able to have key players in place to where if certain things happen, you know, we can say, okay, well, I don't got to deal with you. I can go to this person and deal with them. Right? Because again, we know that the vast majority of black businesses are sabotaged, whether they're whether they're large or small, or whether a person have have a uh, have a mindset to create a, a a big company to where to make it grow into hundred million dollars. And if they do, what happen? What we think is happening? They come in and they throw a whole bunch of money in your face. And most of the time they take the money, right? Because again, ownership is not important. What's important is the millions of dollars flexing on each other, you know, instead of creating something that will last for generations and generations, not only to build wealth within your family, but within your, your black community and within black people. We gotta sometimes think outside of ourselves. You know, we gotta sometimes say, okay, you know, my company's growing, all right, I can sell it, and, you know, but if I continue to go on this on this progress, right, I'm, I'm, I'm making a damn good living, right? I got a nice house, family, what have you. I don't need to sell it. I pass it on to my kids, okay? That is how you get ownership, all right? Because I tell you, the majority of wealthy families, black families, when they die off, what happened to their children? Because they don't own nothing, their children end up being in poverty. Okay? Within a generation or two, that children end up going right back into poverty. But we don't have that foresight. We don't have that foresight because we're conditioned to not want to really own anything. Or if you do own something, we'll sell it quickly because, you know, somebody may offer us a couple million dollars. And you want the reason why? Because they can see the value in what you, in, what, in your company. They can see the value in what you're doing. You can see, you can see the value only temporarily. But the minute they put those millions in front of you, now the value you see is the money in front of you. You don't see, you, all of a sudden, that dream that you have, you're gonna sell it because that dream no longer matters. You, you're rich now, right? That's what you think. You're rich, but you're not wealthy. That's the difference. So, yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, so we have to be, we have to understand our condition. Okay? And there are people that move these pieces, certain, certain positions, certain key players, they put such and such. And like I said, for me, I turn on that money. I don't want it. If you're going to tell me that, okay, I can such and such, but yet I cannot help my, my people, or I cannot uh, learn about black history, and I got to stop talking about ancient Kemet, and I got to get rid of my unk, which again, it's not a religious symbol, it just, unk means family right that you believe in family and i believe in family no matter if you know a majority of black people don't believe in family anymore okay 
But what I'm not going to do is allow you to, uh, um, you know, uh, destroy my family and use the other people within my family to engage in this sort of behavior. And then, you know, I, I'm going to think everything is okay. No. Remember, family is not only uh, blood, all right? <laughs> family is not only blood, okay? You have families that who look out for you that uh, are not your blood relatives. That's, that's, that's your family. People who want to see you do good. You have people within your own family that don't want to see you do good because maybe you don't believe in their religion. Maybe you don't believe uh, uh, a certain thing, right? Maybe you're too outspoken. All right, because the one thing that we know as black people is that we're conditioned not to support each other, right? We're conditioned not to support each other's businesses and stuff like that. We're conditioned not to become uh, uh, mentors, right? If we own a business, we think we're the only person who should, who should own that type of business. Meanwhile, you got white people owning many, uh, uh, they have many companies who are doing the same thing. Same type of business run by different uh, uh, white people or different Asian people, different, different Hispanic people, different Arab people. Because they understand that there's a lot, a huge population out there. Okay? <laughs> but that's what we do. And we're conditioned that way. You, got, you must understand. All right, talk to you guys in the next week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Okay, let me try to say bye. Bye. <laughs>